Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to show you how to make the Quillow Square. So this is the next square in this year's traveling afghan, which is a seasonal afghan. It's a year-long crochet along hosted this year by Angie of Whistlin' Wool and sponsored by Lion Brand. So the Quillow Square is super fun to make. It's a simple single crochet square, and then we make this gorgeous snowflake and sew it right on top. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make the snowflake portion. Um, since the base square is so simple, I figured we could skip that step since most people would know how to do that on their own. But I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make the snowflake and how to attach it to your square so that you're ready to add it to your Traveling Seasons Afghan. If you're not familiar with the Traveling Seasons Afghan, don't worry, I've put links to everything in the description below. Hey everyone, so for this tutorial, we are going to be using Lion Brand Wool Ease in the color Gray Heather. Woolies is a great yarn. It's part acrylic, part wool, and it's a worsted weight yarn. We are also going to be using a size J crochet hook. I am using a Furls Streamline hook for mine. Um, so as long as you have a six millimeter crochet hook, you'll be all set to go. So this square, the Quillow square, is made in two parts. So this is the first part. It's just a simple single crochet stitch square. Um, you can see the ends are going to want to curl on you a little bit. So I do recommend before we get to the final section, blocking your square to the 13 by 13 dimensions that you need. I am not going to show you how to do this part of the square since it's just so simple. It's just chaining and then single crochet and each stitch across for 53 rows. Um, again, make sure that you check your gauge before you get started and you get the same gauge that I have. You should have 13 stitches across and 16 rows up should be a four by four inch square. Um, again, blocking will really help you get that nice crisp square straight edges and get you to the desired dimensions that you need. So the part I'm going to be showing you today, which is the trickiest part, is the snowflake that sits on top of the square. So it's a very, fairly simple snowflake. It's only six rounds. Um, it's easy to do, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it because this is probably the trickiest part of the whole square. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make your snowflake and then we will block our pieces and I will show you how to sew it onto your square. Um, so that you're all ready to add it to your Traveling Seasons Afghan. Okay, so to start our snowflake, we are going to make a magic ring, which is kind of like how I start just my slip knot, but instead of pulling it all the way tight, I just kind of pinch it here, and I'm going to be working my first round into the magic ring. So for our round one, we are going to chain one. Again, the chains at the beginning of each round or row do not count as a stitch. Okay, so we're gonna be working all of our stitches into the magic ring, and we are going to double crochet. Chain two. And then double crochet, chain two. We're just gonna repeat that around till we have six double crochets and six chain twos. And again, you're always going to be working into the magic ring. Make sure you're going over both strands of yarn. Whoops, missed one. Double crochet, chain two, and just repeat that all the way until you have six double crochets. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. All right, last double crochet. And last chain two. Okay, then we can pull our ring tight like this. And we are going to slip stitch to our first double crochet to join our round. So we're gonna be working in joined rounds for our snowflake. 
So just make sure that you have one, two, three, four, five, six double crochets, and one, two, three, four, five, six chain two spaces. Okay, for round two, we are going to slip stitch into the first chain two space to set ourselves up to start. Again, that first slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Then we are going to chain two, which also does not count as a stitch. And we're gonna work three double crochets. One, two, three, all into that chain two space. Then we're going to chain two, skip the double crochet, and again, repeat this three double crochet into the chain two space. One, two, three, chain two, skip the double crochet and repeat that. And we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. So we're gonna be working three double crochets into the chain two space and then chain two, skip over the double crochet. And I will pop up um, stitch counts for the end of each row right here. Just know that I also include the chain twos in my stitch counts. Okay, so we're on our last set of three double crochets. And then we will chain two, and then we're going to slip stitch to our first double crochet to join. And that is the end of round two. So you'll have 30 stitches total for this round. Okay, so for round three, we slip stitched into the first double crochet at the end of round two. So we're going to chain one, and instead of working into that first double crochet, we're gonna start our work in the second double crochet. So this next one. And we're gonna work two double crochet. One, two, a chain two, and then another two double crochet all into that first double crochet stitch that we're working into. So you'll have two double crochet, a chain two, and two double crochet all into one stitch. Then we're going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet into the chain two space. So we're gonna skip this double crochet and single crochet into the chain two space. Then we're going to chain one, skip one double crochet, and then repeat that over again. So two, double crochet, one, two, chain two, and then another two double crochet, all in that one stitch. And then repeat again, we are going to chain one, single crochet into the chain two space, chain one, skip over that next double crochet and work two double crochets. Chain two, two double crochet. And all of that goes into one stitch. Whoa, my yarn got caught. There we go, our last double crochet. And then again, chain one, skip over this double crochet, work one single crochet into the chain two space, chain one, skip the double crochet, and work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, all into one stitch. 
And so you can see that we're starting to get more of like a star shape going here. Um, so I'm just gonna repeat that and continue all the way around. Okay, we'll work our last single crochet and then we are going to chain one and we're going to slip stitch um, into the beginning chain one right here to join and that is the end of round three okay so let's start round four for round four to start we are going to be slip stitching into the first two double crochets and we are also going to slip stitch into the first chain two space so that's kind of like our our setup time we're going to move ourselves over so that we can start our round in this first chain two space then we are going to chain one and just as last round we are going to work two double crochet one two, chain two, and another two double crochet all into that chain two space. Just like that. So same process, same amount of stitches as before in the bottom row, same thing up here, but now into that chain two space. Then we're going to chain two, and we are going to double crochet into this single crochet. So we're gonna skip over this double crochet and this chain one, and we are going to double crochet into the single crochet. And then we're going to chain two, and we're gonna repeat that again. So starting over here, like we did before, two double crochet, chain two and another two double crochet all into the chain two space or I guess the points of our star or our snowflake chain two skip this double crochet or these double crochets and the chain one and work a double crochet into the single crochet chain two and do it again Double, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into the chain two space. And you're just going to keep repeating that section all the way around until you get back where you started. Okay, we've done our last chain two, and now we are going to slip stitch to our first double crochet right here to join. And that is the end of round four. So you can see that our snowflake is starting to take shape. It's gonna look pretty much like a little star for a while until we get to our last round. 
Okay, so for round five, we're gonna be doing pretty much the same thing right here in the points, and then we're gonna do something a little bit different right here in the inside part. So we are going to slip stitch into the first double crochet and into the chain two space so that we're ready to start round five. Then we're going to chain one, and just like we did in the last two rounds, we are going to double crochet, or two double crochet, chain two, and then another two double crochet all into that chain two space. So you can see, just as before, same kind of thing. Now we are going to chain two, and we are going to skip over these two double crochet, and we are gonna work a single crochet into the chain two space, chain one, skip over the double crochet, and work a single crochet into the next chain two space. Chain two again, skip these two double crochet, and repeat this sequence again. So two double crochet, chain two, and another two double crochet all into that chain two space. Chain two, skip these two double crochet and work a single crochet into the chain two space chain one, skip the double crochet, single crochet into that next chain two space, and then chain two, skip these two double crochet, and repeat it again. So I'm gonna do this all the way around. Okay, so we've gotten to the end of our round five. I have my two chain stitches here, and I'm going to slip stitch to the first double crochet to join. And so this is what you'll have at the end of round five. I know our snowflake's getting pretty big. It's hard to see the whole thing on camera now. So now we're gonna go into round six, which is where our star, our snowflake, will start to look more like a snowflake and give that really unique edges to it. Okay, so ready to start round six. We are going to slip stitch into the next double crochet so that we can get set up to work into this chain two space. So this is probably the most complicated round of the whole snowflake. Um, so make sure to go slow, make sure you're counting your chains and just make sure that you're always working this whole big cluster right into this one chain two space. So we're going to single crochet, chain six, slip stitch, chain 10, slip stitch, chain six, single crochet, all into here. So let me show you how that's done. We're going to start by single crocheting into the chain two space. Then we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we are going to slip stitch back into the chain two space. Like that. We're going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Slip stitch back into the chain two space. Chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and end this little cluster with a single crochet into that chain two space. Okay, so this is what that will look like. We're giving our snowflake these little chain loops at the end to kind of give it more of that snowflake feel instead of the star. Okay, from there, we are going to chain four. One, oops, two, three, four. We are going to skip these two double crochet and this chain two and the single crochet. We're gonna go right down into this chain one space 
and we're going to single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and single crochet right back into that chain one space, just like that. So we're creating same kind of idea here with the little loops, but just a smaller one right here. Then we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, we're gonna skip the single crochet, skip the chain two, skip the two double crochets here, and work and start our next repeat right here in this chain two space. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did over here, but now we're gonna do it in here. So I'll show you this one more time. We're going to start with a single crochet. We're going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, slip stitch into that chain two space, chain 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, slip stitch into the chain two space, chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then single crochet into the chain two space. Okay, so just as before, we're making these little cute, I don't know, chain loops is what I call them. <laughs> okay, now we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four. Again, skip over these two double crochet, the chain two space, the single crochet, and we're gonna find that chain one space right here and we're going to work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and another single crochet back into that chain one space. Then we're gonna chain four, two, three, four, and again, skip the single crochet, the chain two space, and these two double crochet, and repeat that process starting here in this chain two space. So you're gonna be making these little chain loops into all the points, these big ones into the points, and these small little ones into like the indentation. And that will finish out our snowflake. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat all the way around, and then I'll show you where to slip stitch to join. Okay, so we've made it all the way around our snowflake. Here's our last chain four, and we're going to slip stitch to this first single crochet here to join. And then you can either fasten off or you can just pull whatever you have left. You're only gonna have pretty much like a small little ball of yarn left. Um, but we wanna leave a long tail to help us sew our snowflake down onto our square. So what I re recommend doing from here is to lay out your snowflake on a blocking mat or a towel. Um, you know, you can wet it down, you can spray it down with water. Same with your finished square. You want to block these. I recommend blocking them before you sew them together. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine on the blocking mats, let those dry, and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how to seam them together. Okay, so I have blocked my snowflake and my square and I'm ready to sew the snowflake to the square. So um, my snowflake is about five rows down from the top, like the very tip of the loop, um, and five rows up from the bottom. So I've got five rows on either um, tip of like the very center loop on the edge of my snowflake. And then here at these top ones, I'm about six to seven stitches in from the edge. Um, so I try to make it as even as possible. This is not a, an exact science when it comes to sewing this on. So I'm gonna show how I'm gonna do it, um, but you kinda just have to use whatever method works best for you. So I'm gonna grab some pins and kinda try to like pin it in place. Um, you can use safety pins, you can use straight pins, or you can also use stitch markers if you'd like anything that um, you have on hand or whatever you feel most comfortable with. So I'm gonna grab my pins and we're gonna pin it in place. Okay, so I also, um, before we put it in place, I took this like beginning tail here and brought it up through the center because I'm actually gonna stitch the center first 
using this little tail. Um, but then I'm just going to kind of, uh, maybe start over here, pin it down. If I can get these chain loops down, that will help. So at least I know where each point of my snowflake should be. Um, I'm using straight pins. That's what I tend to use the most. Um, you just need to be cautious if you use straight pins that they do have a sharp point at the end. So be mindful of that when you're sewing. Um, if you prefer safety pins, those can work as well. I think I might try to pin them down here as well. So I'm gonna get some pins in place here so at least I have, whoop, did that one go all the way through? Okay, there we go. My snowflake will hopefully stay in place for this. Okay, so I've got some pins in place just to hold it. And then for this center part, you can see we've got our six double crochet here. I'm just gonna go from the center through in between these double crochet and then pull it down and then go up through the center again and then go through in between the next two double crochet. Go down, and again, I'm going all the way through to the back of my square. So in through the center, in between the next set of double crochets. Oh, wait, I gotta go through this one. Right, or did I already do that one? Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's hard to tell when you're using the same color thread, but if there's an extra stitch there, that's fine. So go all the way through, and this will secure the center of our snowflake to the center of our square. And you can see my stitches are just blending right in, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. So made kind of like a little star right in the center there. And again, I've gone all the way through. So you may see some stitches on the back of your snowflake, but for the most part, it should blend in. So I can go ahead and just weave this end right in because we're just gonna use that little tail to secure the center of our snowflake. I tend to weave in at least three times and then I'm just gonna let that kind of hang back there until I'm all done. That way, in case I ever need to take it out again, I can. Okay, so the center of our snowflake is secure. Okay, so I've cut another long tail of yarn since I just used the tail of my snowflake to secure the center area. Um, so now if you look, you can see that here we have the three double crochet in round two. Um, and then we've got our spaces here with the two double crochet on either side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of sew all the way up, radiating out from the center. Um, so, I'm going to bring my yarn again up through the center of the snowflake. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail here for weaving in again. Okay. And then I'm going to go down into the snowflake and just kind of like weave it in the stitches of the square like this. So I'm not going all the way to the back and just weaving it up and then whoop, going down into that third, that center double crochet of row two. 
and that I'm gonna pull all the way back to the back of my square and then kind of go up at the top um, of that double crochet and then over this area here and then again going through the stitches of the square. Just like that. And then over and down into the center, like to the back of my square. sure I'm not going back up through the same spot I was in. And then I can weave a little bit farther into the square stitches. And then again going in between and going back down. Oops. All the way to the back of my square. coming back up a little bit higher and then I can weave into the square here and I've gotten to the first point of my snowflake so I'm going to go around this chain here So I've secured a line all the way up this section of my snowflake. So then it's up to you if you want these chain loops to kind of like just hang out or if you want to secure them down. Um, I think I'm going to secure mine down. So I'm going to bring my yarn back up and then weave it through the square rows to the point. Oop, not there. And then wrap it around the tip of this chain loop and bring it back to the back of the square. it in place so it's not going all over the place or getting picked up by there's gonna be a couple loose areas along the snowflake but hopefully it won't get too snagged on anything when you're using your blanket um, so then I'm just gonna kind of repeat that process going from the center out all the way along um, if you want to you can go from here and kind of weave through and attach a little Thing here just to make sure that this part of the snowflake is getting attached as well but you'll just kind of continue doing that so maybe go over here attach up here and then come back down um, and then go back up however you want to do it kind of like zigzagging throughout your snowflake just as long as it's totally secure and not going to fall off of your square um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish seaming and sewing mine onto my square so here is what your Quillow Square will look like when it's all done and attached to your base square. And then you can easily sew it on to the rest of the traveling afghan. I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and I hope that you will give the Quillow Square a try. Um, if you're looking for all the rest of the squares for this traveling seasons afghan, you can find a link to my blog post with all the details in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.